and imagine all these people we've never met and never will meet as similar to us. So, as Americans, I'm just going to assume that most of us here are, um, we imagine people living in California or Washington State or Washington DC or Florida as somehow similar to us. Even though we've never met them, we may share nothing else in common except that we're all Americans. Part of Frank Linderman's goal was to persuade his readers, these white uh, Americans often living in the East, that people like uh, Plenty Coup and Pretty Shield were also Americans. Uh, and this was a, um, a challenging task because they didn't look the way many Americans thought Americans look. They didn't practice the same religion that many Americans believe other Americans practice. They didn't live a lifestyle, they didn't own the individual homes, that sort of thing. Now, Linderman, um, failed at that, okay, uh, in, in at least the short term, in persuading his audience that Plenty Pooh and Pretty Shield were Americans. But in the long term, it all works out. Um, they, they were, at this point, citizens. There was a law passed in 1924 called the, the um, Indian Citizenship Act that declared that all people of Native ancestry living in the in what was then the United States were citizens. Before that time, Native Americans could individually become citizens, um, but were otherwise not considered citizens. And so I distinguish um, a little bit between a citizen and a member of the nation based on this imagined. Um, idea, these ideas we have about what makes an American. So it's possible for a person to be a legal citizen but not be received as an American. And that's part of what was going on here with um, when Linderman was writing down these stories. Okay, so uh, they are all Crow, right? Uh, uh, not Anishinaabe, the, the culture that we're real familiar with here in the Upper Peninsula. The Crow were um, a, a Plains tribe, um, similar in lifestyle to the Sioux and the Cheyenne, for instance, but they were um, uh, rivals and enemies of those two tribes. Um, the, all, but they did suffer in the way that many tribes did. Initially, uh, the Crow Reservation consisted of 38 million acres, according to a, um, a treaty that was uh, agreed to in 1851. Then in, in 1868, that 38 million acres was reduced to 8 million acres. And then in 1904, it was reduced to 2.3 million acres, which is um, the acreage that is, is available today on the Crow Reservation in southern Montana. Um, we don't hear, I think, as much about the Crow as we hear about many other tribes, even Plains tribes, and I have a theory, which I have really no evidence for, so this is just a thought, right? Um, but we're, many people are familiar with the names of many other leaders of indigenous nations like Sitting Bull or like um, Crazy Horse, right, or like Geronimo. But many fewer people, I think, have heard of Plenty Coup, even though he was a chief, a very well-respected chief. And I think the reason for that is that the Crow were often allied with the United States military. So. During uh, the Battle of Little Bighorn, for instance, when, when Custer was killed, um, Crow scouts assisted the United States against the Sioux and the Cheyenne. So there's no, um, there's no kind of mythic story about the capture of Plenty Coup the way there is about Geronimo, for instance. And I think that's one reason why Crow have kind of fallen out of the national imagination. 
um, or at least are treated very differently than some of the other tribes. However, they did suffer in many of the same ways. There was a huge smallpox epidemic in the early 19th century that killed um, close to 80% of their tribal membership. Um, the allotment period when the reservations were broken up into individual lots and the boarding school movement affected the Crow the way it affected almost every other tribe in, the, in what is now the United States, okay? So that's a little bit of background about them. Now, Frank Litterbeck, who is he? Um, he was a young boy. He was born in 1869. He lived until 1938. He, um, as a boy, like many boys, he fantasized about going out west and living in the wilderness and uh, living on the frontier. Um, but he was living in Ohio with his family. And when he was a teenager, something like 15, he persuaded his parents to let him go out west. He was going with another friend and one adult. And they finally said, okay, now, as a parent, I'm thinking, 15? I don't think I'd say yes to that. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe 15-year-olds were older in the 19th century than they are now. But he got very excited when they said yes. So he went out, he went on a train a certain distance with his companions, but then his father was convinced he would chicken out and come home pretty soon, which is what his friends did. But he stayed out there. And this is his description. I'm gonna read for a few pages from each of these books to give you a flavor of what these books are like. So he says, um, it may be that the blood of earlier Lindermans who pioneered in New York State, Pennsylvania, and Ohio was somewhat responsible for my boyhood ache to go west, since I cannot remember when I first began to feel it. I know that it came to me very early and that afterward it never left me, and how I feared that the west of my dreams would fade before I could reach it. Right? And he was almost right because the frontier was declared closed in 1890, which simply meant that uh, the frontier was this line that traced the difference between where white people lived and where they didn't. And so if there were more than, I think it was two white people per square mile, you, you were not on the frontier. And if there were fewer, then you were. At last, however, I won my parents' reluctant consent to leave home and felt that I was free. I believed I should have had, uh, soon have had to go even though their permission had been withheld. Now when my father, mother, and my only brother are gone, I am glad I waited for it as I did. Don't worry, he will be back soon, and then he'll be glad to say, said my father at the dinner table when finally they had 